Nice, now retreat. Run away! Hey guys, we're at the staple now and we're gonna do crossbows on horseback. And we have Ben who has 12 years of experience on horseback, um, but he hasn't done horseback crossbows. So it'd be very interesting. So this is my horse of 10 years. Um, I'm excited to do this with her. Um, I've trained her myself uh, with the help of some other people lessons and um, I really respect them. So this is going to be really fun. How do you think crossbows would be used on horseback? Carefully. They need to go forward and then retreat uh, is my assumption. Now that I'm holding this crossbow, I had figured there'd be some sort of crossbow holster on a side of a horse, but that would weigh the horse to one side. So we're going to test a few different crossbow theories on horseback. The first theory is simply using a pistol style crossbow. We don't have a medieval pistol crossbow, but this is something very similar in size. Um, this would be just a shoot once and then throw it or uh, put it on the side and you're ready for a melee weapon. This is pretty self-explanatory. You're mainly a melee cavalry unit. The next one this is um, probably going to be used uh, with a spanning device like a um, push lever or a goat's foot lever which I don't have but very similar we're going to try to see if we can span that quite easily and the last type is a full size Chinese crossbow uh, try to show it on camera there you go with that kind of size we were thinking this is probably a shoot once and retreat weapon and we're going to see how difficult it is to use this on horseback and we're also going to try to span it on horseback so let's check it out guys. So for the pistol crossbow, it's a simple one shot deal, but you're mainly a melee cavalry unit. So um, there's no point really showing that. You're just a melee cap. This thing can just chuck it after. But now let's show the bigger crossbow and how we can use it. So for mounted crossbows, if it's light enough, you can just span it conventionally like this, as you can see. So if the crossbow is heavier, you can use a goat's foot lever, but I don't have a goat's foot lever, but I do have a push lever, which is the same uh, concept of using leverage. And this way, I can easily span this on horseback, as you can see. So I spin the nut here and here. As you can see, it's easily spanned. The only weakness of this is the spanner, you have to carry it with you. So it's kind of awkward. There's caraquins as well and goat foot levers, but all of them require you to carry the spanner unless you only decide to have one shot. Um, but it's quite easy to do. Oh, poor you, you got spooked. No, she didn't. So when it comes to these smaller crossbows, I think it's mainly a secondary row to give some skirmishing power, but you still have your primary uh, melee weapons because you're never going to outshoot a horseback archer. So um, use this, like shoot a few times you can, but you're primarily a melee cavalry unit with your spears and your sabers. Uh, but this thing is quite compact that you can easily um, stow it onto a specific device. I'm sure they would have invented very oh. specific ways of carrying this crossbow. Um, but you're still a melee unit, so do all the melee stuff that you normally do. Um, and in terms of draw weight, I think the best option is actually a relatively light crossbow because then you can shoot a little faster. With the really heavy ones, the caraquins and all that, and the wind lasses, it's just really awkward to use here. And because you're primarily a melee unit, um, you don't need that much power anyways. Um, the lighter draw weights, you can focus on aiming things without armor, like horses don't have armor, and um, also you can uh, use this to forage food because don't forget people have to eat and you can use this to hunt small game and um, it would be a great tool for hunting as well so keep that in mind um, good nice and then you retreat like that <laughs> nice with a light crossbow like this you can easily span it like that or he can use a spanning device um, to to demonstrate how it can be done. With a caraquin or a goat's foot lever, you can easily span it in this position. You don't even need to use your legs. But of course, you probably would be spanning when you're safe. And it's probably a one-shot weapon unless you're really skilled at loading this in the heat of battle. But I would probably stick to melee weapons in the heat of battle. Oh. Nice. Wow. So yes, you can definitely use a crossbow on, on horseback. It's just a one-shot weapon while you're cantering. Unless you're really, really skilled. So now we get a much larger crossbow like this Chinese one. And we have seen many 
uh, illustrations, especially during the Han Dynasty and also in the Song Dynasty of cavalry crossbows. But how would you span this thing? Well, I think you can just span it with your feet. Let me try it. So, you can see, I hold it like that in this position. And if I'm trained enough, I can train the whole. Now, if the horse is trained enough, he can even move his neck far away from the other direction. But I can easily span any kind of infantry crossbow that, that uses this kind of position. And I think this is the most logical way of spanning it. And we actually have artwork of how they span it this way, but they also use two legs. Um, in terms of the draw weight, I can easily handle 150 pounds in this kind of position because I'm using my legs. It's just pretty simple. But the only thing I'd say is this sia should be far away from the neck. But besides that, I think it's quite easy to span these kind of crossbows. Um, but anything over 150 pounds, I wouldn't bother in this kind of position. But in terms of these kind of larger crossbows, I think they're best used to shoot once and then retreat to safety to span it. Because compared to horse archers, you're not going to beat them in reload. <laughs> or you use these to complement horse archers in, ho in firepower because the most important thing I think is the initial volley of shooting. If you outnumber them, even if half of them are crossbowmen, um, if your first volley is bigger than their first volley, it's going to intimidate them a lot more. So I think um, these can be supplemented, um, especially for example, the Chinese didn't have enough horse archers, so they used probably crossbowmen to supplement that. Um, so that's another way of using this. But you can see I easily spanned it, and now I can use this on horseback. And, but my reload, my rate of fire is so much slower though, unfortunately. And of course you need the horse to be trained to do this at the same time. But as you can see, you can easily span the crossbow on the side. And I'd say just slightly less draw weight than on foot in this position. So I can do 150 pounds to 200 pounds easily in this position, which is enough of, we've tested similar crossbows with 113 joules. That's some scary, uh, serious skirmishing power. I think for the really heavy Chinese crossbows, you probably use it like dra dragoons. So you dismount and you span and you, you and use the crossbow like an infantryman. The, the horse is just there to carry the cross, to transport you to, so you can flank, um, perhaps. Are you ready? Yes. Go. Nice, now retreat. Run away! Nice. <laughs> so he's gone. So this, you can use this as a hit and run tactic, um, but it would be a very slow way of skirmishing compared to horse archers. So I'd probably be skirmishing against melee infantry without ranged weapons at all, or uh, use horse archers with crossbowmen to protect you and just have the crossbowmen as supplementary power so that uh, you can replace, replenish, replenish horse archers with cavalrymen that don't have horse archery skills. So that's another logic of using it. And of course, you can also use it like dragoons. You can dismount. Are you able to demonstrate dismounting? Yeah. You can of course use it like dragoons. You dismount and now you're a foot infantryman. And if you see uh, enemies, then you can mount again uh, if you wish.